All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about here in this video about the concrete stress strain curve. You know, and if you're studying reinforced concrete design, then you got to be familiar with the stress strain curve for concrete. Shoot, you know, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. But here, so concrete is made up of things like, you know, it's like aggregate, which is a bunch of rocks. Sometimes it's called gravel, uh, sand, water, and cement. And cement and water make this paste, which is kind of like a polymer, but it just binds. They, that's why sometimes this two together are called a binder that holds uh, um, that holds the aggregate and sand in place. And, and, and the strength of concrete and the properties, the material properties, the strength, things like the specified compressive strength, which would, you would use for design, and the modulus of elasticity or the stiffness of the concrete depend on, you know, the proportionalities of all these things, you know, the water, the cement, the aggregate, and the sand. And so, you know, concrete is, is cool. You know, sometimes, you know, like you'll hear it called mud or stuff, right? But it's cool. You know, it's concrete, right? It turns into concrete, goes through a reaction, a bunch of heat is released, and, and it cures and hardens, and, and bam, you know, you get the gray stuff that, that everyone likes to use, and it's cheap. The, um, so what happens is once you're on a site, you know, you build, a, you build your structure or whatever, you want to get, uh, get a batch of concrete. You want to make sure that it meets the specified design strength. So what people will do They'll make samples or cylinders that are six inches by 12 inches and do a compression test at 28 days, okay? And during those 28 days, they're gonna measure the load, calculate the stress, and, and I'm sorry, at, during the compression test, they're gonna measure the load, calculate the stress, and then measure the strain, and they're gonna plot a curve. That curve for concrete, the compressive stress, okay? So here, this being the compressive stress, so, uh, this axis representing compressive stress and units of KSI typically or kips per square inch and the strain, okay? And, uh, you know, I'm using like kind of U.S. notation here, but here, uh, inch per inch, okay? Right here, epsilon C for the strain in the concrete or, or length for length right here. And, and, and the curve looks like this. So let's say, let's take, let's take a typical concrete right here. So it, 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 you know, there's a little linear portion and then it, it quickly becomes nonlinear and curves and fails. It ruptures. So here's this rupture point right here. I'll call this the rupture strain, epsilon CU. Okay. And this point right here, this peak, this peak compressive stress right here, we'll call that FC prime, which is the specified uh, compressive strain that's typically used in design in and that, that you'll use in, in what's called the ACI, the American Concrete Institute's 318 Building Code, where you design your structures and things. Okay, so this point right here. Bam. Okay. Now, this point, this peak value occurs at a strain typically for, for most concretes, you know, things, for most concretes, this strain right here where this occurs is 0.002 strain. This rupture strain can range from 0.003 to 0 0.004 strain, this rupture strain right here, this epsilon CU, where this thing breaks. Okay, that that you know that's an important property. And and one thing to note is is that as as the compressive as as the as you specify a higher and higher compressive strength, you know depending on your application. So if you get to like five ksi concrete or six ksi concrete, let's say this was like four ksi concrete, you know if you get to five. 5 KSI concrete or 6 KSI concrete, what happens is that this rupture strain, you know, this, this rupture strain also, this rupture strain starts to decrease, okay? This rupture strain here, as your concrete compressive strength increases, so it's as FC prime, what you specify increases, you should note that epsilon CU, the strain at which rupture occurs, decreases. And your ACI code, your ACI building code, the ACI 318 building code in chapter 10, in chapter 10, oh, I don't know what, I don't know off the top of my head what the section is, but chapter 10 of the building code specifies that the maximum usable strain of concrete in compression is 0.003. And, and for mo most intense, especially due to bending or flexural loads, flexural and axial loads, is a 0.003. This is the max, and depending on which building code you use, that number can change. I think in Canada, it might be like 0.0035. In Europe, some 
applications, it might be 0.0025, who knows, right? It just depends on the building code that's that's being used there. But but those are that's an important thing to know. This is is really important when you come into designing uh, beams and columns and really any any member that experiences any type of compression. Uh, that's an important limit to to know then to understand what occurs and what capacity you have at that limit is really almost the entire basis of, of a building code. But the um, so the other things maybe another thing to be important here is if I if I look again at this at this curve right here, let's just take again let's let's focus on this curve right here, right here. Let's just say this is like a standard concrete right here. Uh, one other property that's of importance or good use is the uh, modulus of elasticity, this E sub C, and here the E sub C is 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 measured. This if this point right here, right here, this is zero point four five F C prime or forty five percent. This location is about 45% of the ultimate comp or the compressive strength. That point right here, a line from zero to this right here, this portion right here, is how we calculate the modulus of elasticity of concrete, at least according to the ACI code. And and this is this is sometimes called the secant modulus, secant modulus. And it, it also kind of corresponds with what is typically the the limit or the proportionality limit, or at least where this curve, this curve right here remains linear, okay, where, where it remains linear. And that, that range can, you know, that, that place, depending on the mix, can range from anywhere from, you know, like 25% to 50%, just depends on the concrete mix. But here, this 45% is, is good for like a 4 KSI normal weight concrete right here, this this right here to, um, at least this is what's specified in the ACI code for the uh, modulus of elasticity. Now, because the modulus of elasticity is, uh, it, you know, it depends on the concrete compressive strength and and uh, all kinds of other things, the modulus of elasticity, and the ACI code provides some nice little provisions on how to calculate the modulus of elasticity. So, so if you go to like ACI 8.5.1, it tells you that you can approximate or calculate a value for the modulus of elasticity as uh, 33 times the weight density uh, to the 1.5 times the square root of FC prime. Okay, and here this you know FC prime is a specified compressive strength. This number has to be put in terms of psi, and this number has to be put in terms of PCF. Okay, and um, and and this and then this equation will give you an output in terms of PSI output right here. Because okay, obviously you can't, you know, you can't reconcile, you know, square root of PSI and three halves PCF and, 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 and you know, do all kinds of other stuff. If you have a normal weight concrete, normal weight concrete, which has a density of 100, about 145 pounds per foot cubed. This is also PCF, pounds per cubic foot. Okay, these mean the same thing. This you can use another equation that's a little bit simpler and quicker. It's 57,000 square root of FC prime. And this, again, will yield output in terms of PSI output. Okay, so it'll give you a number in PSI. And really, most of your applications, or at least the kinds of things you'll work on, are, it will have normal weight concrete. And then you'll, you'll, you'll be able to use that equation. Or you can just go back and use this you know, a little bit more. But once you have that set up in a spreadsheet or something, it's it's really a no-brainer. All right. Well, if you have any questions, let me know. I think that's about it that I want to talk about for stress strength curve. Hope that was helpful.